Ladies and gentlemen, the heat is rising, and it's not just because of a faulty heater, it's because of 2016 in the heavy metal industry. So many terrific albums were released within this calendar year. Compressing this to a list of just 50 was a heck of a challenge, but that's exactly what we are here to do today. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, the time is now for the top 50 album of the year list in the heavy metal department for the year 2016. But first, a pair of notes. First of all, this is something where if you watch the reviews and the numbers seem to suggest something else, the numbers don't matter for this list. This is completely based around secondary, tertiary, four, five, six, seven listens. This is also brought to you by the Cover Killer Nation Equipment Fundraiser for Christmas. That is what's going on right now. You can follow the link that's right now underneath of me and in the description box below if you uh, consider making a donation this holiday season to make 2017 even better for you guys and the rest of this channel. Thank you very much if you decide to do so. But finally, a couple of honorable mentions before we get started. We have Sodom's Decision Day, Affenhammer's Memento Mori, Cold World's Autumn, Megadeth's Dystopia, and uh, Asphyx's Incoming Death. Uh, unfortunately, for those of you who are Metallica fans, Hardwired to Self-Destruct was on the outside looking in. So it's time for us to get started. The official list, starting with number 50, and we're going to do this in rapid-fire fashion until we get to the, about the top 20. So buckle up, and if you need any further clarification, I'm sure somebody will help you out in the comments below. Number 50 is If These Trees Could Talk With Bones of a Dying World. This is a largely instrumental post-rock project, post-metal project that is absolutely fantastic on the ears. This is a band that keeps on getting better, and this is a proving ground of that. Number 49 is Korn's The Serenity of Suffering. The New Metal Boys return with a killer album that actually channels a lot of their elder rage that certainly delivers the, the first half of this disc is some of the best material that Korn has dropped in years. Number 48, Neurosis with Fires Within Fires. While not as classic as some of their other albums, this is still very competent and showcases everything that Neurosis has been able to deliver throughout their long and lengthy career. Scope this one out if you want a nice signpost to what this band is all about. Number 47 is Infinite Annihilator with the Elysian Grand Evil Galarark. This is brutal death metal that has the lyricism of an absolute just destroyer and it has just so much to deliver including a massive epic track that really takes this uh, whole genre of music to a brand new level of unexplored territory that promises to really uh, encourage other members of this genre to step up their game. Number 46 is Jason Richardson with I, the former Born of Osiris and Chelsea Green guitar player, unleashes his first solo record filled with just fantastic melody, tremendous songwriting, and a couple of notable guests that certainly will make anybody who is a fan of the guitar cream in their pants a little bit. Number 45 is Astronoid with Air. This debut is stunningly beautiful. Has that post-black metal or black gaze type significance to it with a little bit of a rock sensibility. These guys are going to be on the tongues for the next couple of years. You're going to want to get on board. Absolutely. Number 44 is Gojira with Magma. This may be seen as a bit of a disappointment for some, uh, but this is a bit of an experimental album based around... A lot of personal things that happened in the life of, uh, of the boys. They took things to a little bit of a simpler route, but I definitely see Gojira having this album be uh, very much a signpost of them being able to combine this with their Elder Scrolls to craft masterful music in the future, as they already have in the past. Number 43 is Anal Nakraft with the Whole of the Law. This buzzsaw only being at 43 almost seems criminal, but that is a testament to how good this year has been. This is a wreckage of an album that has just destruction painted at every single corner and also includes an Iron Maiden cover, which is extremely creative. Definitely not what you expect from a cover uh, any, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but they certainly give it all of they've got, and they give it an interesting spin. Number 42, Periphery with Periphery 3, Select Difficulty. Periphery emerges past the juggernaut duality from last year to really produce perhaps their most stunning album, the one that has easily the best balance and just the best overall scope of what this band is all about. The future looks very bright for Periphery. If you're not on board as of yet, this gent wagon definitely has room for you. You should definitely scope it out. Number 41, Cult de Ghoul with Coven. 
or Evil Ways Instead of Love. I love the fact that this is an album that feels very much like it's primed for an evil stage. This is black metal that is dirty. It has a hell of a concept behind it. It is a masterful listen, even though the 20 minute song lengths may actually t uh, turn some people away. You shouldn't be turned away by this. You should instead be turned on by it. Number 40, we have Hamina with Venus. This is a terrific showcase of what progressive metal can be all about. Hamina is on the rise, and Venus is a showcase of everything that they have within their capability. Scope out this band. You're going to want to get on board. Number 39 is Inter Arma with Paradise Gallows. There's sludge. There's so much going on with this record uh, that has just a lot of creativity abound throughout the entire thing. And that's what causes this to be a very solid release, one that certainly should be explored by intrepid metal travelers looking for something that's a little bit off the beaten path. Inter Arma is showcasing that they have the power to captivate through being just a little bit different than a lot of things that are out there on the market. Number 38 is Novambra with Ursa. Uh, this, these guys are a progressive metal group that returned after a long hiatus and delivered yet another powerful album that delivers so many different emotions, but also a little bit of trademark heaviness. Dan Swano being included with this certainly helps. We're going to be talking about him once again very shortly. Oh look, there he is, Winterscape with the Northern Sa uh, Sanctuary at number 37. This is a brand new Dan Swano project that really picks up where bands such as Edge of Sanity and Nightingale left off, combining that effort or combining those mentalities in order to craft a phenomenal album that really came out of nowhere earlier this year and uh, instantly captivated. This is a band that you definitely want to scope out. It's not their first release, by the way, uh, but it is one that is showcasing that this band is really moving on the right direction. But speaking of our first surprise, number 36, Avenge Sevenfold with the stage. Now, this has been a polarizing album, amazingly enough, considering this is not what the fans of you know the, the long-term band have really kind of come to expect, but this is immensely creative. They went really above and beyond the call of creativity and risk-taking on this album to deliver something that not only feels different, but is different. And it is really channeled and cemented by the 15-plus minute finale, which features Neil deGrasse Tyson. It was a big-time risk. It was a big-time reward for this band that lands themselves on the list for the very first time in their careers. Congratulations to A7X. Number 35, we have Alse with Kodama. This is, once again, another terrific group that is showcasing the real beauty of black jazz or showcasing the real beauty of progressive black metal or or shoegaze post metal whatever the hell you want to call it this is based off of a uh, heavy ozaki uh uh, movie. It has a lot to really offer, and it does give a little bit more heaviness than their last record, which certainly has kept a lot of fans happy, wondering if this band was going to be able to continue where Shelter sort of left off. They did that, and they did it in a big way. Number 34, Animals as Leaders with a Madness of Many. This is instrumental bliss. This is something that is an album that just continuously showcases what this band is capable of. They continue to grow. They continue to diversify. Not to mention, this is a quiet but also aggressive album. One that's going to make you, alongside of the power of Tosin's ability just to really craft great music, to want to become a practitioner yourself. You're going to want to become an instrumentalist, although even though you're going to want all of these different dreams, you're going to think that you're going to be able to always be the master, and you will always be just the tiny grasshopper. Number 33, Anthrax with Four All Kings, the best of the most recent Big Four Foursome is one that definitely shows that Anthrax has elevated their game, continues to be just a solid release-by-release release band, and continues to show that Scott Ian and the boys have this tactful mastery over their sound, combining their thrash metal with a little bit more sensibility, it's giving it a little bit of that punk edge in order to give it a little bit of extra speed, a little bit of extra oomph, and it is rewarded with this release. Number 32, Terra Tenembrosa with the reverse. Versus speaking of weird, similar to Inter Arma, this band displays that avant-garde is definitely a pathway that's worth traversing, considering this is not what the path typically showcases. This is off that path. This is going into the backwoods and finding a ritual right in front of you, and it's a ritual that is strangely enriching. It's beautiful. It's bewitching. That's what this album is. Bewitching. And that's 
where its strength really occurs. Number 31, we have Avantasia with Ghost Lights. Definitely one of the power metal releases of the year, but Avantasia is more of a product of just massive collaboration. It showcases itself once again with Ghost Lights, pulling in on a ton of different resources in order to deliver just some phenomenal work, including some work that includes D. Snyder, which is incredible. These are great tracks. It was one that was highly regarded in the mid-season list, and it still is a part of this list today. So Avantasia's Ghost Lights has been able to stand the test of 2016's time. Number 30, we have Fallujah with Dreamless. This is a group that really, six years ago, a lot of people were on board, but now there's even more on board considering they have been able to really expand their sound, and Dreamless continues on that fashion. It may not have been quite as captivating as their previous release, but this was one that was able to give a lot more to the listener and show that this band has the capability to take their sound to new levels and really attempt to experiment even further to try to deliver something that is going to sound just a little bit different while maintaining some of their traditional ideas. Great on them for exploration. Number 29, Black Crown Initiative with Selves We Cannot Forgive, the sophomore album, continues to show why BCI is going to be one of those bands on the tongues of many heavy metal fans for quite some time. They deliver once again with this disc with honestly songwriting that may be better than their debut, even though this album did not have the benefit of sort of coming out of nowhere and surprising the world. But Cells We Cannot Forgive is not an album that should be slept on, so you should definitely stay awake and give it a listen. Number 28, Testament with Brotherhood of the Snake. Probably one of the best thrash albums of the year, though there is one that is certainly above it. This disc is phenomenal. It's able to display all of the correct avenues that Testament has been able to launch. It is their speediest. It's one of their most aggressive albums, one of their loudest albums, and probably the disc where the sessions really yielded some of the best reward within their most recent uh, revitalization. This is a disc that has so many different classic tracks to offer. If you're a thrash fan and you've not heard this before, uh, where have you been? Come back to us, we miss you. Number 27 is In the Woods with Pure. Avant-Garde Masters return after 15 years, and this is a tremendous disc. This is one that does showcase In the Woods kind of keeping things a little bit safer than on some previous affairs, which is a disappointment to some, but really the funny thing is is that their safety is better than a lot of other bands' creativity. This is a disc that shows why In the Woods was considered to be one of the stalwarts of the early avant-garde movement, why they were considered to be a very heralded band, and why them being back is an exceptional, exceptional pleasure. Number 26 is Fate's Warning with Theories of Flight. The long-running progressive metal band is able to deliver another powerful album, and this is one that really takes you back a little bit. It's one that really channels energy from 25 to 30 years ago to deliver a disc that does have some of that emotional registry, but also just has a ton of power. And that power is what causes a lot of the praise, because this is a disc that shows that they still have a lot of balls, not to mention a ton of gas left in the tank. Number 25 is Obscura with Acrosis. Now, while this may not be Omnivium, they do sort of traverse that same path. It does have some of that brilliance laced within. However, this album also has the ability to showcase a little bit of maturity for this band, and that has been its strongest, strongest favor. Number 24 is Opeth with Sorceress. Again, this band is much maligned by its fans for the non growling in the, uh, idea, but this is an album that really shows that they can procure heaviness alongside of their beauty that they found in their prog age, and this is an album that's able to blend both of those two together in order to deliver a masterful disc, one that has a lot of great signposts for what the future has to offer for this band. They can go heavy, they can go soft, they might even be able to paint a growl in there one of these days just to satisfy the masses, though I doubt it considering Mike really doesn't care, and that's actually really working to his favor. Yeah, is it Blackwater Park? No, but Sorceress is certainly painting that this prog generation of Opeth just continues to get better and more dynamic. Number 23 is Devin Townsend with Transcendence. Now, if you want to talk about somebody who has gone sort of within his own wheelhouse for a disc, Devin Townsend is certainly one of them. Transcendence is definitely Devin Townsend 101 as far as the playbook is concerned. It's just a shame that his playbook is similar to the, you know, New England Patriots, whereas everybody else's is like the Cleveland Browns. 
This is an, another just terrific release by Devin, who has become not only one of the best heavy metal personalities in the world, but he has also become a hero to the heavy metal industry to so, so many, to the point where people are suggesting I shave myself bald and start making funny faces too. How's that look? Number 22, Allegiant with Proponents of Sentience. Man, oh man. This is a group that went through some lineup changes and then decided to go with a sci-fi theme with this album and just delivered. They delivered a really fun disc to listen to. One that is impossible to tear the, yourself away from. You're just glued to it. It's almost as though right there in the package was a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the disc. Once you put it in the CD player, it's stuck and your hand is right there on the disc man or the computer or whatever it is that you listen to it. And then you listen to the album. You feel forced, but then you realize this was a good thing. This was an amazing thing. A Legion deliver once again. 21 is Ringworm with Snake Church. Human Furnace and the Boys just continue to powerhouse their way through violence, and it's one that has all the delivery of a band that has something to prove that they are really uh, just sitting there with the chip on their shoulders, screaming at the world, Look at us, we are badass, we are a group that will kick your ass, and we are a group that continuously does so, screaming from the underground, Respect us, respect Snake Church, or the snake will bite you. This snake bit me, and it bit me well because this disc has a lot of terrific moments, not to mention a ton of great material. Ringworm continues to shatter boundaries and continues to be one of the best bands of this variety on the market. Moving along to the top 20. Wow! Number 20 is Slice the Cake with Odyssey to the West and Odyssey to the Gallows. This is a massive dual disc idea. One that once again, similar to Cult de Ghoul earlier, is very much like a play, very much like a novel, very much like literature, and it's one that has so many markings of just the terrific, terrific Elder Scrolls of literature of years past, but instead of it being one that you read, instead of it being something that you sit on a Saturday night in a chair with nothing else playing, this is instead audio, and that audio uh, added a boost gives it an effort that is unimaginable and extremely, extremely risky. This is one that easily could have gone sour. The band itself may have gone sour, but the album was terrific. It was tremendous. If you don't know this band, please get yourself on board. Number 19 is Hail Spirit Noir with Mayhem in Blue. These avant-garde masters wowed us a couple years ago with Oi Magoy, and once again, this is a disc that shows that this band is far from over whenever it comes to being one of the creative masters of avant-garde black metal. Greece has certainly produced us a lot of terrific work over the past. We have three representatives in the top 20, if that's any indication, but this album certainly displays why Hail Spirit Noir is very captivating. They're a tantalizing listen and a band that you absolutely need to know, and if you don't, you're only hurting yourself. Number 18 is Meshuggah with The Violent Sleep of Reason. The last album, for me at least, was a bit of a disappointment, so hearing this and just showcasing uh, what, how Meshuggah really goes about their business is absolutely wonderful. It's tremendous, and this disc really displays why Meshuggah is considered to be among the elite within the heavy metal industry, to the point where everybody knows their name. This is a band where if you said that there were five reasons people hated them, most of their fan base would either call you a moron, would either call you a liar, or just laugh at you. I guess we'll probably see if that's true next year. But either way, The Violent Sleep of Reason is tremendous, it's terrific. It's one that certainly has gained all of the praise that it is worthy of. Number 17 is Wolverine with Machina Viva, another progressive band that has returned from the gallows and has re just returned with a stunning album. Maybe this... This is, you know, what happens whenever Agalock and Beardfish are no more. We get these bands coming back and delivering classic and captivating records. Machina Viva showcases both sides of Wolverine's trademark sound. One that has a little bit of aggressiveness, a little bit of heaviness, but a lot of heart, a lot of emotion. And it is driven very, very suddenly by just the way in which these songs flow together. Excellent choice of songs, excellent display, excellent flow. Very good album. Number 16, Moon Sorrow and uh, Jim Lalton Aika. I just destroyed that. But either way, Moon Sorrow a couple of years ago was co album of the year. And this is a disc that once again, at the beginning of this year, looked like it'd be a bona fide contender. But 2016 has struck in a big way whenever it comes to the power of all of the releases that have been released. And this is a folk slash 
doom slash atmospheric black slash black slash whatever. There is so much that you could talk about whenever it comes to this band and every one of their albums feels like they are getting more and more of a grip of a handle of what it is that they do and they just keep getting better. Number 15 is Dissona with Paleo Pneumatic. This was the first surprise of the year and it came as early as January. This should have been a signpost of things to come. Oh my lord, this disc is incredible. Another progressive metal band that's displaying why there's a huge changing of the guard that's going on within that department, especially whenever it comes to fans. This Sona is here. They are here to stay. They are crying out to be known as one of the elite. They should be known as one of the elite. They should be alongside of the new elite, along with bands such as Isles or Hamina. This is certainly one that demands and deserves your attention Definitely give it. Number 14, there is actually a tie. We have Dillinger Escape Plan with Dissociation and Isles with Hawaii. Isles with Hawaii was just a tremendous prog disc that I sadly didn't get to review in a full-length review. Sorry to all the boys in the band, but this two-disc set was tremendous. It has so many markings of just terrific sound and wonderful flavor. I love the fact that both of these discs feel like it's able to blend not only the progressive rock blend, but also go a little bit harder edged at times. The storytelling is masterful. You would think it's all about a tropical theme, but no, it's actually got a space theme to it and a futuristic theme to it. Man, what a real strong effort from these boys from Chile. You gotta check them out. And the Dillinger Escape Plan with this association, it's sad to see these guys go, but they come together with us with one more trademark display of violence that actually ends on a very melancholy note. And it's one that actually works so well that that by itself could easily be seen as one of the year's most grand but also most depressing moments. Man, oh man, check this one out. Number 13 is Catatonia with the Fall of Hearts. Once again, Catatonia shows that they can be the masters of both beauty but also the beast. The beast showcases itself a lot more on this re uh, release. We go a little bit lengthier with the songs, and it's one that is rewarded by just a smooth listen, an exceptional listen, and one that demands replay over and over again. You will get lost in this release, and that is the most positive thing that I can say about it. Number 12 is A Neon with Hypnosophy. My lord, this was one that came out of some, you know, out of nowhere in December. In December. And this is another one of those bands like Hail Spirit Noir from Greece that just showcased the avant-garde black metal and just how powerful it is. Just how much you should get on board with this. My freaking god, Earth 2 is one of the best songs that I have heard of this year. It is also backed by a strong, uh, strong uh, set of great tracks that surround it. Man, it's to the point where I'm getting lost within the music in my own head based off of this album, because of this album. Man alive, they are great. And number 11, we have Ska Hamish with Triangle, a triple disc effort. This is not something that should have worked as well as it did, but it did. This is another band that shows progression, that shows black metal, that shows avant-garde. There seems to be a little bit of a revolution going on here. And based off of it, Triangle shows itself as one of the elite and displays why this is an underground group that really deserves not only exploration, but deserves to shout from the heavens that they themselves have risen from the depths of hell to take this land and claim it as their own. Triangle is one that you should get locked inside. It is one that you hold the key to the three albums of music that you will be able to devour. The hundred minutes plus of material that you will get to consume, and you will consume and love. Man, this was a terrific album. It was again a surprise. It was one of those five recently released discs. You gotta check out that series. We talk about great albums every damn week, ladies and gentlemen. And now, speaking of great damn albums, the top ten of 2016. Starting with number ten, which is Haken with Affinity. These guys go a little bit retro. They touch the 1980s. They touch the 1990s. They come back to the 2010s to deliver a terrific disc in 2016. Is it the mountain? No, but it does display that this band is far from over whenever it comes to their exploration, their explorative side, and that their dynamacy continues to develop. They are still a developing band, ladies and gentlemen, and one that continues to pull new tricks out of the hat. 
Number nine is Oliver with A T G C L V L S S C A P. It is all of the elements of the astrology, one letter at a time, from Aries to Pisces. Oh man, for a disc that's really meant to be some sort of one-off, you know, one that was recorded mostly live, that had tracks that were scattered from here and there and everywhere, man, this is one that just delivers on so many different levels. It is a moody disc, and Ecclesiastes is one of the top songs of the first portion of this year. It is one that is able to follow the lyricism that was presented within one of Ecclesiastes' uh, lyrical passages, perfectly, and you'll know those lyrics pretty well, considering there was a famous song that delivered those same words uh, a long time ago in a song called Turn, 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 and let me tell you, wow, this is captivating, this is amazing, this gets you hypnotized. Number eight is Death Angel with the Evil Divide, the thrash metal album of the year, maybe it's all going to come down to some technicality. Death Angel just has been on a roll lately, and this album is really the crest point of this band. The Evil Divide just was not only sinister, but it was one that was able to combine a little bit of simplicity, a little bit of going back to the basics of thrash metal in order to deliver, and really doing so at a high level. That's what gives this album its charm. It's the fact that it doesn't have to mar the edges. It doesn't have to blur the line. It instead just goes in and kicks ass like this band has for 30 damn years and is able to deliver one of the most powerful albums of their discography. It's similar to what you saw with Phantom Antichrist by Creator and they have an album coming in 2017. Holy freaking crap! Thrash is still alive and well and still doing well, so definitely get on board. Death Angel, 100% bravo. Terrific album, that's why you're number eight. Number seven is Riding Christ with Rituals. You want to talk about an album that has some risks on it. You want to talk about an album that is dark, that really showcases, displays, not to mention reflects that idea of darkness within heavy metal music. Rituals by Riding Christ did that and did that in a huge way. That whole idea of going big or go home, well, this is go dark or go home. Man, they called upon a lot of friends in order to help them out, to really add to the darkness, to make it that ritualistic idea. Great idea! It was a great concept! You get your friends, it looks like it's a ritual, it sounds like it's a ritual, it's called Rituals, Rotting Christ. Wow. These guys are top-notch. They are Greek. <laughs> no surprise. They are great. Number six, an abstract illusion with Illuminate the Path. Oh my lord, you want to talk about an album! If you love Neil Bliviscaris, if you miss Agalok, if you love just great heavy metal music, get on board with an abstract illusion. These guys are young! These guys are young! They're practically rookies! And they have delivered one of the best albums of 2016. One that is not only captivating, one that is not only hypnotic, one that you cannot pull yourself away from, but an album that sounds like it's their fifth or sixth that they've been veterans for 10 years, that they have been doing this their whole lives. That's how good this album is. And that is why they deserve the freaking rub. An Abstract Illusion should be one of the most talked about bands in 2017. Make it happen. Number five, Swans with The Glowing Man. This version of Swans is now over with the release of this disc. However, it is one that delivers once again the same thing that was delivered by albums such as To Be Kind and The Seer. And it is something that is, it's an experience all its own. Some people call uh, music by bands such as Tool as a bit of musical druggery or, you know, a musical religion, you know, a religious experience. Swans has a very similar feel to them. Not to mention, if you want to talk about a religious experience, this is one that has even the droning and repetition that you sometimes get out of organized religion. But it is one that works so very well because it builds towards something. This is a band that does not pull any punches, but instead uses atmosphere. I am going to miss this version of Swans so damn much. But Michael Guerra has indicated that it is time to do something new, and I'll be excited to hear what that is. Perfect Swan song for Swans. Number four is Trees of Eternity with Hour of the Nightingale. And um, I wish I could be more excited about this, but the reality is, is that this is the only album that we're ever going to hear from Trees of Eternity, and that is a tragedy, because this is a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece of doom. This is a masterwork. 
these female vocals are not only ethereal, but it blends with the melody, it blends with all of the transitions, it blends with everything that musically occurs in such an illuminating and wonderful way. This vocalist is sadly no longer with us. May she rest in peace. This band is no longer with us. May it rest in peace. Unless they decide to revitalize it with another vocalist, but it will be nowhere near what this band right here really was. This is an album that was supposed to come out two years ago and then got shelved. We are so happy, those of us who have explored this and you who will be exploring this album after this list is concluded. We are so happy we got to hear this music. If you are out there, Trees of Eternity, we are so happy that we got the opportunity to hear the craft because the craft not only broke our hearts but also elevated our spirits because you delivered one of the best damn albums that 2016 has to offer. And this is a hell of a year. This is the most competitive list of all time. To be at number four, that's a hell of an accomplishment. And it's just... Uh, I'm so sad that there's not going to be more from these guys. Um, I really am. Palette Cleanser, Bronze Metal. Number three, Eson with Arctis. Wow, okay. Well, a couple of years ago, Eson released an album. It was dark. It was different than a lot of his past albums, and he was able to really channel into darkness, similar to what Rodney Price did. And you know what? He decided to go a little bit against the grain with that. He decided to go back, but combine the darkness alongside with his previous versions, his previous material, to deliver progressive metal that has some black metal, that has some this, that has some that, and it, you know Eson by now, I hope. If you don't, why don't you know Eson? Get on board with this. Go check out Arctis. It is an art form. It is beautiful. It is similar to going to a museum, seeing some picture that is on some, you know, dirty, dusty old wing, and you cannot stop looking at it because it is the most beautiful thing that you ever saw. That it, it, you're not looking at the Mona Lisa. Fuck the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is stupid. I can see that in books. I can see that on TV. I want to see this weird thing, this thing that makes no damn sense, but somehow works in every conceivable light. That is exactly what Arthas is, only it makes sense. It was beautifully done. It was masterfully affaired. I love this album, and so should you. Speaking of amazing albums, The Silver Metal! Insomnia with Winter's Gate. 40 minutes, one track, and the most captivating listen, potentially, of the year, whenever it comes to lengthy tracks, whenever it comes to telling a concept, whenever it comes to just overall surprising all of us. Whenever we heard there was going to be a 40 minute track, we weren't sure what to think. We weren't sure if it was going to be worth all the hype. We weren't sure if it was going to be good or not. Well, guess what? Not only was it good, it was great. Not only was it great, it was terrific. Not only was it terrific, it is the second best album of 2016. It is a masterwork. It is a crowning achievement for this band, and it demands respect. If you don't have this disc already, go out and purchase this one. Support this band because they delivered a masterpiece. But it's only number two. If you want a band to support here in 2016, if you want the band that should be the fastest meteoric rising stars of the heavy metal industry, we do not have a classic artist as number one. We do not have an artist at number one similar to a Stephen Wilson, either that or perhaps a carcass. No, instead we have Vector with Terminal Redux, their third album, and one that should take them straight to the moon. One that should take them straight to the stratospheres that they speak about within their songs. This is thrash metal that has progression. This is progression that has some death metal. This is some death metal that has some black. This is combined, this is hybridization, and this is glorious. This is glorious! What an album! This is one that takes you on the ride. It's like you're watching the sci-fi movie or listening to the sci-fi movie. You're watching the movie in your head that everything that you are listening to is giving you. It gives you that image. It gives you everything and a bag of chips. It really even delivers a nice stiff drink for you to consume. It feels like you are on a doomed mission. It feels like the beauty that of space surrounds you, but also the emptiness, the chasm, the real just destruction. Oh my god. This is a disc that absolutely demands your attention. And while it was not a perfect score, it was about as damn close as it got. We had no 100s out of 100s this year, and we will never again, considering the scoring system is going to change. But your album of the year, 2016, is Vector with Terminal Redux. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. 
for watching this video, for watching this marathon video all about the 50 best albums of this year. Once again, if you like the list, please consider giving a donation to the Cover Killer Nation Fundraiser for Equipment 2017. The link is within the description box below. I am CKN. I'm going to take a couple days off, so I will probably see you guys after Christmas. Take care. What a year 2016 was. Give me some of your lists for this year in the comments below. Have a good one.